What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and today we are here for a new college football revamped NCAA 14 rebuild and we're doing a team that low-key is probably been my favorite team in the Pac-12 since I've been watching college football. That's the Oregon Ducks. Now I feel from the standpoint of a rebuild, Oregon is a really good team. Not S-tier team, but definitely A-tier. They're a five-star program. You can go up to a six-star program here. Um, but ultimately, the challenge for me is that Oregon's never really won anything. Like, you think back to the peak years, even what they had with Mario Cristobal and Justin Herbert, and then before that with Marcus Mariota and Chip Kelly, like, Oregon was always the good but never great school in college football at its peak. It's always a team that definitely had enough talent to win a national championship. It could just, it just never came to fruition. So that is why I am rebuilding the Oregon Ducks here, because I want... To not only take over a team that lost their lost their starting quarterback in Tyler Show, who transferred to Michigan, but I want to take over a team that has been so close yet so far away from winning a national championship. That I think we can do it. I don't think it's going to be super stressful, but we definitely have challenge ahead. So looking at our roster here, let's meet the faces at quarterback. I'm going to go with Jay Butterfield at QB. Shao did transfer. Brown is the better player, but it's only two points. I think we're going to get bigger benefits out of Butterfield playing now as a freshman, getting that extra year ahead of a development. That'll help us uh, for the quarterback spot of the future. At running back, we have Travis Dye, his brother Troy Dye, very good linebacker. We have CJ Verdell. Actually, I'm going to probably make Verdell the starter, the burner there with 95 speed. Also have Sean Dollars, redshirt freshman. He's going to have a very high ceiling here for this squad. I, I will say Oregon is a school that has got affected kind of negatively from the transfer portal. Um... You look at it, they lost, obviously, Shao, their starting quarterback. They lost uh, Habibi Liko, who was like their power back. Very solid. Got a lot of touchdowns for them. Um, at wide receiver, we got Johnny Johnson, the third, 87 overall. Jalen Red, 86. Pittman, Devin Williams, the monster. Brian Addison, 6'5", with 89 speed. So our wide receiver room has a lot of depth to it, but maybe no prolific all-stars. There's no one in the 90s. No one that's going to be, you know, first, second, third round pick in the upcoming draft. Uh, DJ Johnson, who I believe is a converted defensive player at tight end, 80 overall, more of a more of a blocker. It is a receiver on the offensive line. We do have the opt out, so no Suell, which is a massive loss for this offensive line. And I mean, generally Oregon during like the Justin Herbert era had a very good offensive line, but we were very much in the rebuilding stages of this O line. We got 81, 82, 89. Alex Forsyth at center is the best of the group, 81, and an 86. So Jeremy Street, it's not a bad O-line, but this is an offensive line that, for the better part of the last five years, has been one of the premier units in college football. And they're very much going with through, you know, through their own rebuild stage. And on the defense side of the ball, in my opinion, probably the pound-for-pound -pound best player returning to college in real life for the 2022 season is Kayvon Thibodeau. 6'5", 250, 94 overall as a true sophomore, preseason All-American. He's outstanding. Absolutely outstanding and probably the best edge rusher we've seen since... You know, Chase Young just happened. I personally think Thibodeau's a little bit better than Chase Young. And that's not to say that he's in any own tier and you have the Bosa's. But, like, I would generally... I, I would... Depends on where you would have Chase Young, say, in comparison to Miles Garrett. I, I think Thibodeau's more of a Miles Garrett than a Chase Young. You fall between them. Where it's like, Miles Garrett was S++ tier. And then Chase Young was S tier. So I put Thibodeau right in the middle. But he's an outstanding defensive end. Very special player. Uh... Faulu at 87. I mean, there's going to be a bunch of uh, bunch of names I'm probably going to butcher on this team, but it is what it is. Jordan Scott, a defensive tackle, solid, 87 overall, but not a lot of depth there behind him. Luckily, I'm pretty sure it's a front three. They were in a three-four. Uh, linebacker core, a lot. This is a, this is the strength of this team going forward. For this rebuild, we're going to have insane linebackers. We have just, I mean, uh, Isaac Slade Maluda or Mutt. I'm already going to butcher. Like I said, all these names. This is what it is. Matutia, Matautia. See again, I'm Canadian. We don't people don't have names like this in Canada. But he's our starter. But beyond that, we have Justin Flo, who's an 83 true freshman. And middle linebacker, P. Nice Suell's brother, Noah Suell, 86 as a freshman. And then we have Funa, 88 as a true sophomore. This is an S-tier linebacking core. It is absolutely gonna carry our team. As this rebuild goes on, and even the secondary, there's some nice playmakers. Mikhail Wright, 93 as a true sophomore. Lenore, the veteran of the group, redshirt senior, he's a 90. I don't know where um, Thomas Graham, TJ Graham is. He must have opted out. Same, there's no 
Uh, Javon Holland, who I have clearly as my safety one. Uh, he's not there. We do have Verone McKinley the third, who's a little bit higher of a free safety. Might as well actually make him the starter over Hill. You get, get more value. Both these players are sophomores. Uh, we have Nick Pickett, 86. I'm actually going to... I don't want to... I don't want to dog Nick Pickett here a little bit. Let's put, let's do this. Because, I mean, the sophomore, we might as well get him on the field. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big enough jump, actually. No, let's keep him, let's keep picking. And that's, he'll be the depth player. Special teams, it is what it is. 86 and a 67 punter. But ultimately, a very interesting squad. As long as we can solve the quarterback issue and endure the development of our offensive line, the secondary is going to be very good for a long time. The linebacking core does not need a lot of touch-ups. It's just, let's build that defensive line. Let's rebuild this offensive line. Let's find a quarterback. Maybe get a couple explosive playmakers at wide receiver. And I can't see how we won't have success in this Oregon Ducks. College football revamped rebuild. For a recruiting, maybe a little bit of a risky approach. I'm going for, I mean, there is 14 total players. But I'm kind of going for quality over quantity. Uh, a lot of these guys I will dip out of if, if things, you know, we can't start to close the gap. Like we got Phillips, number four QB, still within his top five. I uh, got some got one running back, one wide receiver versus you know casting a bunch of nets. I just want to try to get you know this first recruiting class under about get a lot of good players um, defensively. You know again four stars. It's 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 a blessing to to be starting at a program like Oregon right away where it's not gonna be you know we're that cupcake two three star program. We are kind of coming into the fact that we should be almost always top twenty five recruiting class just because we are Oregon. Um, but you see, I, we got to put some importance here on the secondary. We need a free safety and a strong safety uh, for our requirements. Fullback, I'm not so much worried about. Um, so yeah, the secondary, we do need to add a little bit of depth there. Also have a good uh, feel on two athletes that look really nice here. The four-star Tony Gray, the five-star Brandon Cook, uh, all on their short list. But also, you know, the same could be said that while we have a lot more doors opening for those four- and five-star uh, schools and, and, and prospects, I think the bigger thing is like, we're going to be competing against the Alabamas, the Clemsons. So it, while it is easier in a way in, in regards to like there's more prospects that have Oregon on their list, we're going to be competing against a lot bigger schools than if we were kind of going for the three stars, the niche type players. So there is still very much an added difficulty as we gear up for the 2020 season. Let's get into it. Let's get a baseline for where this Oregon Ducks team is going to be for this rebuild. And at the end of season one, that ain't bad. I'll take a two-loss season to the fact that we had a sub-80 overall starting quarterback. 10-2, and two, and we're playing in the Pac-12 championship. A very quick look at our recruiting. Again, quality over quantity. I don't know if that's going to bite us in the ass, but we got a lot of signatures that we need at 71, 72, 70, 73, 72, 71 wide out, 69 running back, but he's a burner. 75 athlete who looks like he's going to be corner safety? 82 press, 80 zone. Yeah, definitely going to play on the defensive side. Probably a safety. And we still have three guys remaining that we're going to be able to go all in on the offseason. Uh, definitely think we'll be able to get Bryant and potentially could swing Cook and or Cleveland. So I'm happy with the recruiting. I'm happy with the record. I mean, obviously it's not perfect, but we weren't going to ever really contend for a national championship year one. At least that wasn't my expectations. Very quick look at the stats. Seasonally, Butterfield. What do we got? 20 tutties. 15, ooh, that's not great. Even though he's on fire, that's not that's not the best stat line that you want to see. Over 1,000 yards, 8 tutties for Verdell, 660 and 5 for Travis Dye. No dominant receiver, 5 touchdowns red, 6 for Johnny Johnson, but no one really even close to sniffing 1,000 yards. Passing attack, not really where you want it. Funa led the team with 70 total tackles. We had 17 TFLs, 5 and a half sacks from Kayvon Thibodeau. Obviously not up to his standard, but sacks are definitely something in the sim here in NCAA 14 that I do notice is not ideal definitely not where you want it to be uh interceptions also not particularly great defense would be slightly underwhelming but how you know how are you really getting play we're still top 10 school only two losses so let's see if we can look here really quickly and find out what those two losses were we lost to virginia 14 28 and then we lost to ucla so we underwhelming losses i mean virginia is ranked but we know virginia's team right now at the top of your head could you name five players on virginia probably not you don't want to be losing that one we had a couple of close ones a couple games here one point victory over tennessee one score victory over washington uh one score victory over utah had to go to overtime with oregon state i don't know what the battle that is for 
Uh, but it is a rivalry game. But either way, we did enough to punch our ticket to the Pac-12 Championship. That would be a great way to start this off because we win this. Most likely we'll finish top five. So let's see what happens. Hazard Trophy winner went to Travis Etienne. Congratulations to him. We did win the game. We're number seven. We're playing number six, Indiana, in the Rose Bowl. We won the Pac-12 Championship. I'll add that to my profile. Might as well. Uh, I do want to get a recap from that game. And we actually kind of smoked them. 37-14. to 14. That's a legit USC, but Butterfield played, it looks like, maybe his best game of the season. Three touchdowns, no turnovers. We're able to run the ball. Verdell over 100 yards. Over 100 yards for Johnny Johnson. Two touchdowns for Pittman. As Oregon is going into the Rose Bowl, and that's a legit win if we can find a way to beat Indiana. Year one, a Rose Bowl victory. Most Oregon fans would take that, especially given the state of the roster right now. So let's handle Indiana. I mean, you think in Indiana, they have Phoenix at, uh, at QB. He's pretty good. They got a good defense. Um, but other than that, I mean, I think, I think we should win this one. It was an epic Rose Bowl. Indiana took us to OT where we were able to finish it off 37 to 34. CJ Verdell got a six yard touchdown run as we finished top five in the country. Butterfield, unreal. Seven touchdowns and no interceptions between the Pac-12 championship game and the Rose Bowl. That is all the mentor you want to see for him to become the next great Oregon Duck quarterback to take our school to higher levels. Verdell looks great. He's coming back, I think, next season. Johnson's on point, but he is a senior. He will be graduating. Defensive side of the ball is what it is, man. I'm ha I mean, you know, giving up 30 points was not an excellent defensive performance, but this is all the momentum you could ask for as we gear up for year two. So there's always a problem with big schools. As you enter the offseason, you go to players leave. You're going to have a lot of underclassmen that want to go. And we've always kind of set a rule for ourselves that anyone third round and a below, we try to convince to come back. But it's always been like, is, is, it, is third round the cutoff? Or is it third, second, and first we let go? I feel like day two, if you think you're going to be leaving, you can get drafted second, third round. I'm going to let you be. And maybe it's a little bit easier this year with Verdell because we have an opportunity with Troy uh, Travis Dye. To convince him to come back, which we got him. So he's going to be RB1. Uh, McKinley at safety. We're going to convince him to come back. Very easy. But we will let Verdell go. I think it makes sense. Rounds 3, 2, and 1. If they're going, then, I mean, they're S-tier players. And we're very lucky that like for someone like Kayvon Thibodeau. You know, I don't know if he could as underclassman. I think he's a true sophomore. But um, we are still losing some big guys. Verdell's going to be gone. Johnson, our top wide receiver, is going to be gone. Lenore, our corner 2, is going to be gone. Scott... Uh, who's easily our best defensive tackle on the roster. He is leaving, but, you know, we're still, you know, we're going to be able to endure this roster turnover and be competitive in year two for sure. Signing day has worked out well. As you can see, quality over quantity. Sometimes that gives us a pretty bad overall ranking, but, you know, we're good. We literally come at 10 on the spot. We have 10 four-star recruits, a couple of guys there, three and twos that are just filling out roster positions. They probably won't make the main roster. Definitely maybe a little annoying that we didn't get any five-stars, but that's definitely where the room for improvement can come for us at Oregon. But at 10 four-stars, four-stars and five-stars, you're really, you know, there's not drastic amount of difference. I mean, we got unreal players. 75 corner, 75 D tackle. Uh, Tony Gray, who we think is going to be a safety of some sort, could be a corner. We got a, one of the fastest running backs in the... Uh, recruiting process number 23 we got hampton reed a top 10 tight end a top 10 outside linebacker a top five free safety underrated dn four star johnny brown and a top 10 strong safety so a lot of improvement especially on the back end of that defense from this first recruiting class year two for the oregon Ducks, we start top 10 at number 10 uh, which is not too too bad i think given some of our roster turnover some of the doubters some of our haters but when you look at the offensive side of the ball, Butterfield up to an 84 overall, expecting another great season from him, especially for how he finished last year. Die, 92 at running back. Pittman's a 95 wide out, 91 for Williams at wide receiver, 84 tight ends. Uh, Spencer Webb taking a big jump this offseason. Maybe went to Mexico for his training or something. Uh, O-line, 85, 87, 94, 85, and 90. So it's one of the better units in all of college football. 98 for Kayvon Thibodeau. Oh, what a beast, man. I want to see double-digit sacks. I moved Funa from outside linebacker to D-end. That was just his skill set. I mean, in real life, I, I don't know, for say, if he could make that transition. But in this rebuild, I'm moving him to D-end because we had depth at linebacker. Uh, we're able to move uh, Suell there. But Flo, Justin, Flo, this true sophomore 88, too good to not be on the field. So I kind of got better at two positions because Flo was depth 
And Funa was just an excess at outside linebacker, moving him to end. Got both these big-time playmakers on the field, which was a top priority. Wright's a 97 corner, one of the best in all of college football. Um, Davis is an 86-85 for DJ James. 93 for McKinley at free safety. 89 for Hill at strong safety. 94 kicker, because kickers matter too. But overall, very good roster. Absolutely can challenge this season for a national championship. Very, very quick look at a recruiting board. Kind of going for the same thing. Not trying to stretch ourselves too thin by going too many prospects. So I got 13 that I've narrowed down to. We're either in the lead for or definitely, you know, within the top five. Nothing too, too. I don't think we have many five stars. I think it's going to be another recruiting class, again, that we're just going to prioritize the highly rated four stars and just accept what it is. We are in on one five star, Marcus Riley. An athlete, number nine athlete. Uh, looking from his skill set here, I mean, he looks like he can play pretty much everything. Maybe more inclined to be a corner with that 86 man, 87 zone, but he looks like an absolute beast. And we do need some corner help. Get some youth. Get some. Get some young studs that are going to be able to benefit us year four, year five of this rebuild. But for year two, I think we're going to be very competitive. So at the end of year two, we finished where we started at the end of year one, which is top five, 11 and one. In the Pac-12 championship, I don't know necessarily. We will check. It, you know, what does this game hold? If we beat Arizona State, but they're only 23. I don't know if that will propel us enough to go up three spots into that top two for the Natty. Our recruiting, for, let's just get this out of the way, for the year, maybe not as good of a class as, as we had before McCall locked us out. We still have two guys going uh, in the offseason. I mean, Troy Smith, the athlete there, that's pretty much a foregone conclusion, which means we can stuff all of our points on Newberry, just outside of a top 10 wide receiver. Look at this, man. Studs. Again, quality over quantity. Not much more that I, that I really need to worry about there. I'm happy with that class. Uh, and hopefully, you know, going with so few players won't bite us in the last two years of the rebuild. We might not have the depth, say, if we're getting 20 type prospects every single season. So look at the top 25. Will they win over Arizona State? Propel us into... I mean, there's there's one lost teams. I mean, I think if we win, we definitely should be able to jump all the teams that aren't playing. You know, we, we don't have... I mean, Auburn's not even the SEC championship for some reason. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's Georgia and LSU. Okay. Um, weird. But yeah, we should be able to leapfrog Texas A&M. We should be able to leapfrog Auburn there. Potentially, I mean, we can leapfrog Cincinnati. They do not have... A game to play. So in Miami, you never know. Clemson, that's a tough That's a tough out. We have definitely a good opportunity that if we can handle Arizona State, we could play ourselves into a national championship here in year number two. A look of the season stats. Butterfield. What do we got here? 23 tutties, 17. It's still not great, man. He's still not playing like an S-tier quarterback, but we're finding ways to win games. 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns. Travis Dye, outstanding dollars, was solid as well. No, Don, receiver of Pittman, 700 yards, eight touchdowns is not bad. This defensively, I think that's probably where our team thrived here. Flo led team 72 total tackles and five and a half sacks. I don't know what's going on with Thibodeau. Injuries are turned off. Should be better than that. Daywood Davis, five interceptions leading the team. I think he's actually in the transfer portal in real life. Uh, but either way, I mean, I'll take that. Let's see if we can handle Arizona State and see where that puts us in regards to the national championship game here in 2021. Oh, no. God damn it, that's frustrating. It was Spiller, Texas A&M, won the natty. Over 20 total touchdowns, beating out Brees Hall. We're number nine. We're going to the Alamo Bowl. Uh, David Davis won the Jim Thorpe, which goes to the best corner. I just, how did that happen, man? Arizona State. Forward, I mean, they wanted more. Look at that, look at that second half. Outscored us 28-10 to 10 in the second half. You're not going to win a lot of games like that. Butterfield played well. Jaden Daniels for Arizona State played better. Five touchdowns. I mean, he's an outstanding quarterback. One of the more underrated quarterbacks in college football next year. That I think, you know, in regards to being an NFL prospect. It's not... God damn it. Much like my reaction, probably the reaction of the squad just didn't care about this bowl game and... It reflects defense. It went to overtime, 48-45. We're on the losing end. To a talented Iowa State team. Got a good quarterback. Uh, and Purdy, oh my God, six touchdowns. Roasted our secondary. But again, I mean, just underwhelming after the results there. With everything on the line, potential national championship on the line, losing to Arizona State. I don't blame my team for checking out. For our players leaving, only one underclassman. That's Brian Addison, fifth round, which gives us the go-ahead to try to convince them to stay. 
and we were able to do that. But Dye's going to be gone. Starting center is going to be gone. Losing some guys, some pieces on the defense side of the ball into the 90s. But, you know, uh, not, nothing too, uh, you know, too, too crazy that we're not going to be able to overcome here in year three. So at the end of the recruiting cycle, I was actually a little skeptical about our class. Because, again, very, very top-heavy. Not a lot of depth. And we're top five. Uh, got ourselves a five-star, nine four-stars. So pretty much we just traded our recruiting class last year to flip in the five-star. So we got the... Who was our five-star? Sorry. My, my ignorance it is Raleigh. Yeah, the athlete there. I mean, that's stacked class. Fritz at QB gives us an emergency break glass in case... For year four and year five, um, in case we have to get younger, but uh, I'm happy with this recruiting class. So it'll be year three, real recognized, real. They're finally putting us as the number one overall school in the entirety of the country. Recruiting, I, I think for this, I want to go all in on the offensive line, which means it's going to be a gamble. I need linemen bad, so I'm not going to be able to spend uh, really at, at wide receiver. We're going to need some special teams or whatever. I can, I can wait a little bit later once the dust starts to settle. Uh, but we need like a wide receiver, we need a running back, and those are like some of the guys that we have at wide receiver, at running back on the roster right now are athletes that can play either position. So I'm not overly worried about those minimums, but we need to churn out some good linemen that can compete uh, in years four and five, and, and that's why we're going full 700s on guard, centers, and two tackles. So hopefully that gamble kind of pays out for us. I'm not going to be expecting an insane recruiting class this year. Uh, but looking at our starters, there's a reason why we're the number one team in all of college football. Butterfield's a 90. Looking for him to actually have a big season uh, this year. Dollars 93. At wideout, we have three 95-plus wideouts in Pittman, Williams, and Addison. This, let's be honest. This is most likely going to be our best shot at winning a national championship. Our squad is good, and it doesn't really, especially on the offensive side of the ball, have a lot of depth. we got Thibodeau return as a senior. Don't know how we manage that. We have Funa, 97. Uh, D-Tackle, Williams, 85, 86, 94, Sewell, Flow, 95, 98 corner. Like, this is it. If we can't put it all together this year, uh, we're peaking. We're absolutely peaking. So, fingers crossed that this Oregon team's as dominant as they should be on paper. In year three, we're going to get that coveted reason why we even picked Oregon in the first place to get them that national championship. Another opportunity, end of year three, undefeated. We did the hard part. Just can we not fall flat on our face in the Pac-12 championship game? It's a tougher opponent than you would argue that we saw last year. Um, uh, it's going to be, I hope not anticlimactic because this is it. This is like our all-in type season. Uh, looking at the stats. I mean, okay, first of all, looking at where we're at for the top 25. Number one, who is it going to be? It's Michigan. They're going to play Iowa. That's not an easy game. We have probably the easier matchup. Alabama there. You know if Alabama can beat seven Kentucky. God damn. Bama could definitely play themselves into contention. Let's just handle business. We beat USC. We're going to a national championship. This is our best opportunity to do so. Uh, statistically, uh, Butterfield, a little bit better season from a yard standpoint. 3,100 yards, 24 touchdowns, eight picks cut down on the interceptions, which is good. 1,500 yards, 19 touchdowns for Sean Dollars. That guy pretty much has probably played himself into at least Heisman contention. Uh, 890 and 6 for Pittman. 10 touchdowns for Devin Williams. On the defensive side of the ball, Cunningham led the team 75 tackles. We had 7.5 sacks from Funa. 5.5, 17 TFLs from Thibodeau. So again, the sack numbers, a little underwhelming, but it is what it is. Hill at strong safety led the team with 3 interceptions. I just want to see quickly before we go further, did Dollars get himself into the Heisman? he got to be top 5. There we go. Behind Charbonnet. Uh, Levis from Penn State, Jefferson from Arkansas. He's right there. Okay. I like seeing that. Let's just, ha come on, handle business against USC. We'll, we'll play the moments here just to watch it firsthand, and hopefully our season doesn't come crashing down here. All right, take, you know, front row seat. Let's go. National championship. Can we handle Keaton Slovis and USC and punch our take? We get the interception there. We're starting to pile on a little bit. Oh my God, I'm nervous. I, I do have a great gut feeling about this, fellas. I'll say that right now. We go into halftime down three. Both defenses playing fairly well. Oh, come on, man. Shut out. Get the touchdown over the fourth quarter. Can't really get in hold of a lot of momentum. USC able to get back in it with a field goal. Another interception from the defense. Two very crucial interceptions. 
as Oregon gets a one-point victory over USC to punch their ticket for the natty. I mean, I, I know offensively wasn't great. Dollars was outstanding. I want to give credit where credit's due on the defensive side of the ball. Who got those interceptions? DJ James, the senior. Justin Flo, the junior. They understand how important this was. And Oregon is going to the national championship game. QB bias in the Heisman here. Dollars coming in number three. Is what it is, man. Uh, we have the best kicker. We have the coach of the year, Mario Cristobal. And it has set a battle of the undefeated. Oregon against Michigan. Let's effing go, baby. A pluses across the board. Michigan is actually a favorite outside of Corso taking us from all the major statistical stuff. Uh, they have us looking at their undefeated streak. My God. They have ran through everybody. They kicked the shit out of Iowa two straight times. Beat ranked Illinois. Beat ranked Notre Dame. Is, I'm actually a little bit worried. Because it looks like they average just about 50 points a game. Okay. Has a school ever averaged 47 and a half points per game? I know I haven't seen it. But this sets up for an all-time national championship game. I would almost like to say because of the streak, how dominant Michigan was. It's almost like a little bit of David and Goliath for two unranked squads. They got Cade McNamara at quarterback. Got some explosive playmakers. Definitely the betting underdogs, I would say, is the Oregon Ducks. Oh, we missed the opening coin toss. I usually like to kick it, get in the second half. That's fine. I face with a third and short. I want to see what this Sean Dollars guy, Heisman contender, what he's all about. How good does he feel? And he feels real damn quick there as he gets seven yards to move the chase. Got third and inches here yet again at midfield. We got Justin Herbert's brother, lead blocker there. Actually does a very good job setting his block up as Dollars moves the chains yet again. Oh my God, they can't stop the run. We're chewing the clock up. They can't stop the run. You can't score 46 and a half points if you don't get the ball on offense. Boom, Tutty. Too easy. Just ruthless efficiency from Oregon there. As Butterfield connects with Pittman, we get the opening score of the game. Let's see what our defense can do against this very prolific offense. And they force a punt. Here we go. 6-5. Addison, run him over. Run him over. I mean, he's a little bit light in the ass. A little thin. But I'll take that 19-yard reception. Big third down conversion here. Our run game has been on point. But we need to just keep on these down and distances. Able to keep moving the ball. Oh, that's easy. Addison again, 6'5", gets just enough separation. Two, I mean, lengthy, man. Just get a little bit of a push off there. Maybe, maybe not a flag. But the, you know, the laundry stays off the field, and we stay on the field. So I got to go. Clock's going. Play maybe gambling a little too much here. Ah, let's go! Devin Williams. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to burn it from terrible clock management. But we did not get burned. What we did was get a touchdown and leave zero time for this prolific offense to get on the field. They do get the ball to start the second half. And they... It's a putt, man. Bad day in the office for this Michigan offense. Oh, oh that might have been picked. Stay in bounds, Williams. Devin Williams cannot be stopped. Second touchdown of the game. 56 yards. Bringing a school record. Four touchdowns in a season to boot. It's a great ball to fit that in between the corner and the safety. And this is just an absolute ass whoop. And they have one first down. They have one first down in this game. Almost 50 yards a game. Or 50, 50 yards, 50 points a game. This is an all-time performance from Oregon Ducks defense. Game over. They're an exhausted defense. They could never get off the field. We controlled the game. With the running attack. Finish it off with a pass attack. Eight of nine. Four touchdowns. I mean, Michigan's defense wasn't anything special. They weren't bad. They weren't good. I would love to see a shutout here. I don't think we're going to get it. Uh, we almost got it. But look, we had our third stringers in to finish out the game. That's how you know that this is complete utter domination. I mean, it's Harbaugh. Almost over. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt whatsoever beating up on one of the most overrated schools in all of college football. And get your first national. I don't know if has Oregon ever won the national title, like back in the '80s or something like that. I don't think so. This we, I'm pretty sure we just made history. If not recent history, the Oregon Ducks are your national champions. 
Huge performance from the quarterback. Four touchdowns. Only one incompletion. Huge performance from the running back. Sean Dollars was unstoppable. We were only able to do the things we were able to do. Control the clock. Control the line of scrimmage because of that run game. And I think Butterfield, while he does get all the accolades, I think Sean Dollars was the MVP for me in this game. But let's see them hoist that crystal football. As we still have two more years, it's definitely going to be maybe a down period. This is probably going to be the people. Who knows? We could go on a Cinderella run with our death players, with the next crop of guys that we have coming in. But this was a very special team, a very special performance, and we achieved our goals. 28-7. to Oregon is your national champions. A couple players declaring to go out on top after the national championship, but luckily for us, they're late round picks. He's a sophomore going. Come on, Chris is your chance to be wide receiver one for the team. But we are losing. I mean, just look at that. Look at all the high 90s. McKinley, Patterson, uh, Addison, Pittman, Wright, Thibodeau, Funa. It's going to be, uh, hey, it's a rebuild within a rebuild. And for our signing day, as we uh, somehow are still number two, even though we went 14. It wasn't bad. wasn't great. Missed out on a couple of our late signings. Still finished with a four class. No five stars, but we went heavy on the threes and fours. Uh, offensive line was a top priority for us. And unfortunately, uh, we lost two tackles at the dying moments here. 79 slaughter, 78 irons. The disrespect to go to USC. Yeah, that's just, you know, that's just a poor decision. But looking at our actual class, guys that we got, got 79 center. We've got some good middle linebackers. 78 guard. Um, got the special teamers that we absolutely need. We need a kicker and a punter. It's just, you know, I kind of went all on the offensive line and we only returned with 50% of the targets that we want to get. So we look to defend our uh, national champ. We started number three, which is actually not bad given the level of talent on our roster. At least level of talent that left the building on the roster. Still have Butterfield as a senior, 96. Dollars is returned as a red shirt, senior, 99. Definitely aspirations of winning the Heisman there. Wide receiver still 90 pluses. Got Justin Herbert's brother, Patrick Herbert, first team All-American, 92 overall. O-line is not as good as it once was, but you still got a 90 left tackle. We got an 80, uh, 93 center, 93 guard. Offensive line still solid. Defensively, not as overpowered as it has been years past, but we do have two absolute studs. Noah Sewell, first team All-American, 98 middle linebacker. Justin Flo, 99 outside linebacker. We got a 95 Dante Manning at corner. So we do have some premier players, while maybe not as complete of a juggernaut squad as we have years past, but absolutely we should contend in the Pac-12 and could sneak back in to defend our national championship here in year four. And the end of year four is a weird one. We're the number three ranked team, two losses, but we don't play in our own conference championship, which means probably one of the top two teams at USC. Cal! We're ahead of Cal on the overall rankings. Did we lose to them during the year? We did. That's yeah, first first legit game we lost to Cal. Huh. So let's see this. Let's look at the 25. If Cal loses the Pac-12 championship. Mm, yeah, there's, there's no way. Because either they're going to, you know, what? Do they play USC? If USC wins, they're not even ranked. So there is a scenario where... Cal loses. I mean, all we need is one of these two teams to lose. There, there's a chance that we don't even play. And by not playing, we could find our way into the national championship game to defend our title. So that's good. I just still don't understand how in any way, shape, or form we're still the number three ranked team in, in the entirety of the country. Butterfield, in his final year of college football, 3,000 yards, 38 touchdowns, 10 picks. So he's going to be going on to the NFL. 1,600 yards, 13 tutties for dollars. Outstanding, no thousand yard receiver. Look at that, Justin Herbert's little bro. Six hundred yards, eleven touchdowns. It's a productive year. Eighty six tackles for flow. Thirteen TFLs. Six and a half sacks. Christian Williams. Three picks from Andrew Fallu. Not bad. I, I you know I guess nothing too overwhelming and or underwhelming. Let's just you know sit and wait and see where we're going to be playing here in this postseason. Dollars yet again. Third place for the Heisman. Can't. Goddamn Naval Academies, man. And we finished three. We got the Sugar Bowl. I do want to kind of see now because we were kind of invested how in the top two kind of played out. What happened here? So I assume Michigan won. LSU, why wouldn't it matter? The top two teams held their spot. Cal did beat USC and somehow we're still ranked ahead of them. Guess we'll take that. The corruption 
of uh, of NCAA rivals that of the new soccer super league, I suppose, that they're building. Uh, let's just get through this ball game and gear up for the fifth and final year of the rebuild. And what is it down here? Still some highlights. Butterfield has passed Marcus Mariota for passing yards for a career, as well as touchdowns for a career. We were able to beat Texas in the Sugar Bowl, 49 to 35. Let's see if we can get the recap there. See who did well. Butterfield, I assume, probably you know, for the most part, postseason. He has delivered. Regular season has been inconsistent. Actually, not a great game to go on on 250 yards. Two touchdowns, two picks. It was more so dollars. Very awesome running back. 86 yards, four touchdowns. Head up Oregon, get another bowl victory. And I have absolutely no idea what our team's really going to look like for this fifth and final year. I think it is going to be bad. So we have two players that we have a chance of bringing back. Hudson at wide receiver. Back-to-back -back years, we convinced him to stay. We're fullback declaring early. Okay. But what we are losing is just in, in the two-year period. There's just no way. This is our bubble uh, the last two seasons. Uh, you just can't maintain. We're losing so uh, like, dollar 99, 99, 98, 97. Oh, my God. Whew. It's, fuck, it's, it's like Red Monday right now. It's not good. And for the final year of the rebuild, we open up number two. So technically, I guess, just don't lose. If we win out. We have, we, we start in that position. And also, Michigan is still there. Depth chart, I'm a little worried, though. Uh, quarterback, we have Marcus Riley, the sophomore, who's an 88 overall, but that 93 speed, electrifying athlete, could be better than expected. 85 at running back, 97 Chris Hudson at wide out, 99 speed, prolific. But after that, man, significant drop off in the talent. Tight end's fine. O line is, oh my God, let's auto reorder this real quick. Can we help out? Oh my, okay, we got to help out that left tackle. Let's put Dickens there. Oof. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think we're going to be holding on to that top spot very long. 97 center anchors the O-line defensively. You got some, like, 70s in the starters. Linebacking core, not nearly as strength as it was. Secondaries from the corners, not bad. 89, 88, 86. Free safety, Gray's a 92, 86. Like, I don't see any way. Unless it's a complete down year across the board in college football. Now, we will be holding on to this number two spot, but crazier things have happened. So our fifth and final year here, we finish it out playing Alabama. If you, if you just said that from the optics, like, oh, shit, another fifth competitor year. But we're actually in the red box bowl. Alabama's falling off the face of the earth. At least we finished ranked. Uh, we had Gray win the best defensive back in college. I mean, we can go topping Bam. We all knew that when we won the Natty, it was most likely you know, that was the peak that was the peak of, of this rebuild, the peak of this year. Yeah, I'm glad that it happened. I'm glad that everything happened the way it did. And within the Pac-12, we're third place behind Cal and Washington. So it's, yeah, the drop-off has been kind of noticeable. But with the quality of player that we have, it was, it was almost, not say expected, but it is what it is. 17 touchdowns, 10 picks. Yeah, that can only take you so far. We had a nice one-two punch in terms of touchdowns for our running backs, but no one went over 1,000 yards. Hudson almost went over 1,000 receiving yards. He was our best skill position player. 82 tackles for Lee. Eight and a half sacks. Braden Swinson, 26 TFLs. That's actually outstanding numbers. Seven picks. Tony Gray. Like seeing that. Best DB in the country. Cleveland with four. Those are some of our top recruits that we've had in this rebuild. So that's good to see that kind of come all to fruition. But let's just cap this one off, hopefully with a victory over Bama. And that'll be a successful rebuild in the books. Front row seats for the final game of this rebuild. Going on top. This would be our fourth bowl game victory. We, we lost, I think it was year two or year three. It was the only year we didn't get any hardware. So other than that, man, no real complaints. This has been, even in the down years, Oregon has still been a nice program. And if you can finish this thing off by beating Bam, which we are smoking them. 28-7 in the first half. They just can't struggle. They can't cross midfield. So it's, at least it's, no, it's not us. If Alabama's struggling, that means anybody can struggle in an NCAA sim and this is hell of a way to go out, man. Going on top, 38 to 10. The bowl, I mean, probably don't care about the bowl game at all. Like, whatever it was, red box bowl. Like, is that pretty much blockbuster? But we go out with Riley, three touchdowns, no picks, over 300 yards. Anytime you put up a game like that against Alabama, you're going to be patting yourself on the back. Hudson goes out on top as one of our most explosive playmakers we've ever had in line with, like, D'Anthony Thomas, Kenyon Barner. We've got a bunch of sacks. An interception to boot. I, I think that's the perfect way to end this one off, fellas. Five years with Oregon, four bowl game victories, one national championship. 
Life's good. Life is good and this is a successful rebuild. So let me know in the comment section below what school you want to see me rebuild next. Could be varying degree of difficulty. Could be a bigger program that has just struggled like Oregon. Could be a cupcake school like Rice or something like that. You want to try to have a new breakout contender in the state of Texas. Anything in between. I will go with the most requested school in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe if it's your first time stopping by. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys back here in the next one. Thanks for watching and peace out.